This is brought to you by Sudrohi Entertainment. My man, what's good? Episode three, five cast episode three. Got a good friend, a dear friend of mine, Mo Saffron out here. I'm digging the shirt too, bro. Thank you. The sweatshirt, yeah. Yes, it's, sir. It's vibe cast. Yes, so sir. Yeah, you got the vibes. You got the memo. But yeah, man. Um, appreciate you coming out. Thank you for having me. Showing love. Yes, sir. Uh, for the listeners, I guess just we'll get right into it, man. Talk about your life and your career, your music career. Okay. What do you want to know? Where are you from? I'm from Culpeper, Virginia. I lived in Gainesville, Virginia for about seven years, pretty much all of elementary school. Before that, I lived in Hagerstown, Maryland for okay. almost a year. Before that, I lived in Buffalo, New York for four years. But I, I'm, I say I'm from Culpeper, so... Hagerstown and Buffalo, completely different sides of the spectrum, huh? Yeah. City so and country. <laughs> my, it was, my dad was working up in Buffalo, and he got a promotion in the northern Virginia area. So he was trying to find a good place to move down south. And got you. Discovered Hagerstown. And I, I got a few memories from Hagerstown. <laughs> I actually, my manager actually lives in Hagerstown now. Okay. Yeah, so. Cool. I got a few things, actually. Hub um, City. I think they call it Hub City. I've also heard Hager's Bush. Hager's Bush. Hager's Bush. Sounds appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what got you What got you into music? Just where you started taking it serious as an artist? Yep. Um, music originally was just a natural gift. I started playing piano. The story goes, it was Thanksgiving at my cousin's house and they just got a new grand piano and they put their son, my cousin, into lessons and they're all in the other room and they hear the piano playing and they're like, oh, wow. Yeah. So-and-so's lessons are really paying off. And then they come around the come corner to find and out. they see me. <laughs> and after that, my parents uh, immediately put me into piano lessons did that for a few years, but it was always just a gift, and I've always had a strong love and passion for music. Yeah. And then I took a class in high school that really got me going, and then college I auditioned for Shenandoah University, ended mm -hmm. up going there studying jazz piano. There I learned how to produce. This was 2010. Yeah. So that's where it really started 2010 so yeah i'm like in the 11th year right now yeah that's what's up man so you high school is really what you were acclimated to it before because you just had a natural gift with it but high school is really where you're like kind of entertaining the idea yeah maybe music might be the yeah. route. well i mean it was kids in the school started like making songs for yeah. fun so like we got like this cute little microphone from walmart and started yep. making songs like just and it sounded the quality was terrible garage band usb mics i don't even remember <laughs> what i was using but yeah. i will say this other thing that in my senior year mm. i took this one class where we did absolutely nothing we just like played on the computers wow. and i discovered this website jam glue okay. shout out to jam glue rest in peace i don't think it Why? exists anymore. it was, sounds familiar though jam glue and all you did it was just like a dj software and you would just find songs that had the same bpm yeah beats per minute just match them up and match them up and you could like mash them up together so i remember like adding like a 50 cent song to some like <laughs> soldier boy beat and oh word yeah I, I was like yo this sounds fire that like it inspired you <laughs> yeah got you like, into it that was literally my first taste of producing yeah 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 i mean that's that's producing for sure um and that was the next thing i just wanted to ask like you draw from a lot of a lot of sounds um any inspirations like i know you probably yeah got a lot of them yeah, definitely old school. I grew up listening to cassette tapes. My dad would play them. Carol King, K 
Kev Mo. Let's go. That's raw. Stevie Wonder, Bill Withers, all the old school, Al Green, mm-hmm. um, Marvin Gaye. Um, but then, you know, I was I was up to date. I was hip with the 90s scene because I'm a 90s baby. Yeah. So now, now that's what I call music. Right. All those, <laughs> we would collect those and as kids and sing karaoke to them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all I'm all over the spectrum. Um, you could tell you yeah. come like you're grounded with the substance in your material, though. You know, a lot of people... You know, it's easy nowadays, some of the millennials just making quick music, spur of the moment, impulsive vibes. But oh, you actually yeah. have a substance to it, too. Very yeah. Well textured. Well, yeah, absolutely. I'm very passionate about good music. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the music today, the what you referred to as the millennials, it's not bad, but yeah. it's just a lot less goes into it. A lot less thought goes into it. And that translates, man. It's like the people who have substance, the people who have something to say, stories to speak on, like yourself, it it carries longevity, you know. If these millennials out here just in the studio, just smoking herb, you know what I'm saying, just making yeah. a quick bop. I mean, the song might last for a little bit, but uh, yeah. no, nah, I respect it, man. I respect where you, uh, the roots. So, you, so your dad mainly was playing those songs. What yeah. about your mom? What was she listening to? What my dad was listening to. Word, okay. Yeah. So he kind of, he ran the... <laughs> But I do remember my mom told me she like listened before she met my dad. Mm-hmm. She listened. She liked Super Tramp. Okay. And so I, I like remember that. listening then. <laughs> Dream of yeah, yeah, dream. yeah. <laughs> take, take the long way home. Yeah. So yeah, I, I like that too. Yeah. Um, again, all I like all music. Never really dove into like the metal. Yeah. But I do see what people see. And that music, that's something about. I could appreciate that for sure. Yeah, and I heard this funny story the other day. Um, Some dad was saying, if your boys ever get into a fight, like all this tense, yeah, anger, aggression, up, put on so and so like a heavy metal song, and they'll just like it turns into stop fighting. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Now I know growing up you were in. Uh, you know, playing basketball, playing sports. I gotta ask you, bro, because I don't, I don't think I've ever brought this up to you. The white mamba, white mamba. Has everybody, has anybody called you the white mamba before? Never got. Okay, that, no. maybe I just, I remember coming into Hazel River Church. Is that the name of the church? Yeah, I played there a couple of times. You were yeah. balling, and I got in there. I didn't know you at the time. Well, you know, word of mouth. Okay. Like, yeah, that's a white mambo. Okay, <laughs> wow. I'll take it. I was going to ask where it came from, but Dang. I guess... Uh, Compared, I don't think I was as much of a killer as Kobe, but I did have a killer You had mentality. a shot, bro. Yeah, and I still have a killer mentality. So, I, yeah, I'm not afraid to take that last shot in yeah. clutch moments. And I did do that a lot through my basketball career. Did you ever entertain the idea of, like, going professionalism or being a professional athlete at all yeah and hoop dreams still alive they're dead ayo let's go (laughs) now they're pretty much dead but (laughs) um yeah i mean i never i got some d1 looks but never got any offers i was a little undersized um Little undersized. Little undersized, yeah. That's true. I mean, like size wise. I mean, I'm six two, and I've grown since high school. Yeah, I'm yeah, like true. Six three on a good day. Hey, um, but <laughs> a little small. But I mean, that could have changed with a good weight lifting program. Yeah. But um, I, you know, I did get a couple of D two scholarships, and I did play a year in Division three at Shenandoah. Gotcha. And I've considered like, yeah, I could go overseas, but. Music. Uh, I fell in love with the music. Music took so, over. Yeah. Um, I have interest. Interest is my next category. I got a few questions I want to pop off at you. Let's go. Favorite Nickelodeon show growing up? Easy. Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. Yeah. I was hey a rocket Arnold. power. I was a rocket power guy. Rocket power was dope. Yeah, the, Did you know rocket, rocket power was uh, Santa Monica? No, I didn't. It took place in Santa Monica. I guess that yeah. makes sense. I did not know that until I was out living in LA and that I makes think sense I for saw sure. like a picture of it and I was like oh wow Rocket Power is 
based in Santa Monica. Yeah, I wonder if that shop, that snack shop or whatever, is actually like a real place. Could like the be. snack shack they always went to. Yeah. Or, uh, what's his name? Uncle Tony. Could or be based off something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, top five most pivotal people in your life. Dad, mom, mm, siblings, probably. Yeah, okay. It's all family. You got three siblings? Yeah. Three siblings? So there's five. There's five. Damn. Let's go. Right there. Shout out to Ben Safran. Yeah. Baby, baby <laughs> Only bro. one I really know out of them. Baby bro. Um, your go-to studio snack. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Damn, I don't really snack in the studio. I respect that. But if I was, well, this is tough. Um, I don't know. Beef jerky, maybe? Okay. No. I can see that. I'm yeah. a, I do fruit. I got like a bunch of Fruit's fruit in the good. studio. Yeah, I like fruit. Um, two features, dead or alive. Your choice. Mm. Who would you choose? Eminem. Wow. I could see that. Absolutely. Yeah, I could see that. And, hmm, this is tough. Let me go with the girl. I'd like to play piano for Adele. That would be dope. Yeah, that'd be big time. Yeah. Manifest it for sure. For sure. Adele's got those pipes. Mm hmm. <laughs> um,. Craziest experience you've ever had in your music career? Mm, probably. Mm, I mean, there's a lot. I was going to say, if you can't recollect one. Yeah. Music. Uh, is, uh, I would say what the people want to hear, probably smoking with Wiz Khalifa. That's pretty cool. I got that in here. Yeah. <laughs> What but, was it like meeting Wiz Khalifa? <laughs> it's my next question. Nice, yeah. And Taylor Gang. Cool. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just made sure, don't drop this blunt. Yeah, don't, don't drop the blunt. <laughs> <laughs> so just smooth transition. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. How, um, so how, how did that take place? Was that through management that put that on? It's just that interaction and linking with them? or Yeah, um... Wiz Khalifa's DJ, DJ Bonix, he actually dated my cousin. Okay. At University of Pittsburgh back in the day. And when I started making music around college, my cousin reached out to him and he liked it. And we linked up and he started kind of mentoring me. That's what's up. Yeah, introducing me to people. And we still keep in touch. So, yeah, that's how Wiz that Khalifa. Happened. Shout out to Wiz. Shout out Love Wiz. Love that I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good guy too, man. I'm sure there's a lot of people in the music industry that you've at least came into interactions with maybe for a brief time or um, people that you personally know. But Wiz Khalifa, I don't know. I don't know him personally, but he seems like a pretty chill guy down to earth. Yeah, pretty down good to earth. Good vibes. Good vibes, for sure. Um, favorite place you've ever performed? Mm, 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 mm. I do a lot of wineries. What's what I'm thinking right off top is where I'm having my album release show at okay. the end of this month because I played there for the first time. It's called Ducard Vineyards. It's in Etland, Virginia. Um, played there about a month ago and I fell in love and I was like, this is where I want to do my album release show. So asked them and turned out I was already booked for June 25th. Were you really? So I'm like, I'm going to make this into the album release show. So it kind of just worked out. Is that, uh, I meant to ask you, is that exclusive or is that an open invite? For That's an open invite, yes. So uh, June 25th um, five, starts? 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. I am going to do a live stream. This is okay. the first time I've ever done something like this, so hopefully everything goes smooth. But if you can't make it, people are able to purchase a live stream mm. for nine ninety nine through Facebook. That's smart. Yeah. Okay. Just trying something new out. 
No, it's it's good to plug that in, especially with like post COVID world. You know, if people don't feel comfortable coming out there. Right, right. Definitely cop the uh, the live stream. Ten bucks. Sure, ten. Save bucks. yourself a, a McDonald's run. There's uh, some great openers too, so you'll okay. definitely get your money's worth. Yeah. yeah. What was the one opener you were speaking of? Uh, oh, he dead. They're a five piece band, but they're just bringing the trio. Out. Okay. Um, guitar, lead guitar, harmony guitar, and the singer. Gotcha. And they're from D.C., and they're like funky, soulful, groovy. <laughs> sounds yeah. like my speed, bro. Infectiously groovy. That sounds like some good watery music. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is deep. Let's get deep. What does a piano mean to you? Hmm. Hmm. And the way in which you can articulate it. Therapy. Okay. Yeah, I think you mentioned therapy. Yeah. I would say piano is therapy. Like just any feelings, emotions I need to get out. Like some people might choose a boxing bag, the yeah. gym, um, I don't know, drinking, whatever your vice may be. The piano, like... Just right when the fingers hit. You want to give them a little, a little sneak peek? We could. Let's but uh, yeah, <laughs> something the, about the black and white keys. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it is definitely my therapy. It is my medicine. Yeah, I love the piano. There's like this subtle complexity to it. Like you said, the black and white keys, but there's so many notes that you can play and combinations that you can play. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's such an interesting instrument, too. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a string instrument. Yeah. It's also a percussion because the percussion hammers are hitting the string. True. So it's kind of in its own little league. Wow. Yeah. And I don't know, something about the hands and... Yeah. yeah. Go to work with it, create that yeah. magic. Um, you do have a single coming out soon, right? Lost and Forever? Yep. That is a house song, actually. Mm -hmm. This is different. This is not on the album. Okay. Um, which I, I mentioned the album release show. I'm releasing an album. Um, <laughs> Lost and Forever is a song I made with a DC-based DJ, Late London. And yeah, it's just a fun little dance song. So the album's releasing June 25th at the day of the release party or you think about no. releasing it after okay. yeah probably after because i'm still work, working working on it doing some last minute touches but for the purpose of selling something at the show i'll have at least an ep ready nice. to go okay so cool. uh, there's 12 13 songs on the album i'll have at least five done to sell at the show nice yeah okay so i don't have a release date yet, got you but it's i like that. july i would say july. i like that yeah I like to keep the people on their toes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we, we spoke earlier, you know, the upbringing between the country and the city. You have a very eclectic, like, background of the two. Um, how do you think that is translated in your music and changed your music, just having the perspectives of the country life and the city life? Well, just, yeah, I'm always trying to search for things in the unknown. And yeah. just trying to... Um, experience more experiences yeah um so yeah i like to travel haven't been out of the country too much mm -hmm. um so that's definitely a future plan i want to travel uh, internationally but for as far as domestically i've been to i would say probably 75 percent of the states wow yeah, I actually didn't know that, bro. That's that's a lot. Yeah, I've been to a lot of states. Um, so yeah, just traveling and um, seeing new people, having new experiences. It's just adding to my life. And yeah, what? And that's all yeah. the whole lifestyle of music. You know, yeah, it's it's really a lifestyle. You know, being a musical artist. Um, the music scene in L.A. How was that for you? Because you spent a couple years out there, right? Yeah, a couple yeah. years. Uh, it was 
crazy. <laughs> um, I didn't really know what I was doing out there. I was just trying to keep up. Yeah, keep up. <laughs> just get my foot in the door. So yeah. I did do. I started out doing some like open mics just to meet people. Mm-hmm. I did do a couple shows. Um, but mostly I was just in studios, in and out of studios, like gotcha. in NoHo, North Hollywood. That's where most of the studios are, I believe, and, and Studio City. NoHo, yeah. Yeah. I think I've heard of it. Yeah. So, and yet I was working with, just sitting in, watching producers do a thing, and I was working with this other producer and one time this artist came in and we just started like making a song for him. Yeah. So yeah, just kind of getting my feet wet and soaking it all up. A lot of energy it sounds like, a lot of like organic en- energy, lots of energy. And probably a big probably learned a lot there too doing all that. Just like yo man, can you play this riff real quick? Yeah. Sure, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, back to living in the country living in the city just Mm -hmm. always developing myself yeah developing my character getting new experiences it's always it's never ending journey just always getting better i think that's so cool bro always learning yeah yeah and just drawing from that perspective because the country people they they definitely city people and country people definitely have different perspectives you know so i think that's kind of cool um you want to speak on the vibes in colorado at all I know it was brief, but... Absolutely, yeah. Love Colorado. Um, my girlfriend lives out there in the mountains, so I'm out there all the time. Um, and she lives in Dillon, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually did a show at the iconic Mercury Cafe. Okay. And that's in Denver, actually. And then I... Did some wineries and some breweries up in the mountains, and I'm scheduled to play a couple shows this summer in July. And yeah, it's the vibe out there. Yeah, love it definitely. I, so I stayed out there for about a about a year as well. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is some of the production in this album and composition from Colorado? I know there's a time where you hit me like, bro, I'm like cooking up in the mountains right now. Yes, yes. I recorded some vocals out there. Um, and wrote really just wrote the songs yeah like just drawing that inspiration out. yeah yeah just the the foundation of some of the songs started in colorado for sure nice yeah that's a good place to conceptualize because it's like fourteen thousand foot mountains makes you really <laughs> has perspective for sure yeah the views are crazy yeah yeah um i got some random questions just to cap it off uh you're stranded on an island for 10 years with only a record player what three albums would you choose? Stevie Wonder, Key of Life. Okay, classic. Nora Jones, um, don't know why. Come away with me. What oh I can't yeah, think of dude, the album. Fire. I think I it's called Don't mom, Know Why. Something like that. I mean, that's like the hook. Two thousand five, I believe. That's the album that she won like all the Grammys. Yeah, on. I grew up listening. My mom would clean the house listening to that. Love that album so much. Yeah. Third one. This is tough. Mm. Well, I'm just going to go with the an easy answer. Random Foster the People Torches, because that was one of the first albums I bought. Okay. More when sentimental, I got a, sentimental yeah, value to it. When I got a record player, like, um, 10 years ago, and I got Foster the People, Torches, and it's a great album. And they're a great band. They make great music. Yeah. So, sure. Nah, yeah. dude, I love it, bro. It's like yeah. three. Definitely left field for sure. Um, favorite flavor of ice cream? Chocolate. Chocolate? With peanut butter. Okay. Love peanut butter. Um... Biggest fear or weakness? Mm. I hate this question. <laughs> Every interview I've ever had for John, what's your weakness? Yeah. Um, I guess not achieving what I'm capable of achieving, not reaching my potential. 
That's it, yeah. I think everybody should fear that, honestly. I love that. That's a good answer, bro. I'm really testing you here. I'm ready. Because <laughs> you're the homie, bro. I got to throw it at you. Um, what did you want to be when you were a kid? What was your aspirations as a kid? I think I had thoughts of NBA player, NFL, okay. just like everyone yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. No, I was there. I was but uh, I also I wanted to be a doctor okay. when I was a kid, yeah. Got you. Still a doctor. Still a doctor. <laughs> yeah. This is Speaking medicine. of which, man, I was going to say, you want to give him a little outro? Sure. Before we let's, head out? Let's go. Let's get Let it. get some water. Also got some pistachios for you as well. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Okay, let's do an album song. We'll do... We'll do Wings on Fire. Sounds fire. shooting star but the wish went to Mars she keeps collecting miles searching for a smile traveling in sorrow she believes in tomorrow Saffron, the doctor giving Thanks. you the medicine you need. <laughs> Appreciate you. you, bro. Appreciate you. Amen. By Sidrohi Entertainment.